And now we're here with uh, John Bunker, uh, the editor from uh, Green Car Reports. How are you, John? I'm good. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for, for sharing your time on uh, um, this show. Today we're talking about uh, mostly green cars, the BMW i8, the new uh, super electric plug-in hybrid car. It's kind of a long way to describe it, but that's what it is and uh, what all this means for, for uh, consumers. I mean, uh, we're living probably in the best era for new technology in cars probably ever. No, don't, don't you agree, John? It's certainly an incredible change. Um, it's very exciting for folks like you and me to cover And I think, in some ways, every day, a lot more car buyers and consumers are starting to think about a wider variety of choices. They don't necessarily have a lot of space yet in the showroom when you're going to buy a car, but people are much more aware. Certainly, Green Car Reports is getting an enormous amount of questions about what are these electric cars, what does it mean to plug in a car, You know, how does that actually work in real life for me? And that's uh, that's probably the, the, the topic that is going to be very hot for the ne next uh, few years because, I mean, there's like a, a lot of new cars coming up with this new technology at different ranges, right? Absolutely. And, you know, someone once put it that the automobile is our last major appliance that hasn't been electrified. You know, pretty most people have clothes dryers that are electric. We still have gas stoves out there for various reasons, but, you know, more and more leaf trimmers and lawnmowers and things like that are electric. Cars, by and large, are still running the same way they did a century ago. They're taking a very high-energy hydrocarbon fuel and using an incredibly complex device to turn that into uh, torque that turns your wheel. Although, unfortunately, you waste about 75% of that energy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and that's uh, that's incredible. And uh, this change has happened, uh, let's say, or started to happen, like, can we say with the Prius, when the first hybrid was introduced? First in Japan, I believe, 1997. So it's not been very long, but the evolution in the past, I'm going to say in past three years or five years almost, it's, it's been incredible. I mean, all these new cars, even the Bolt, that when it, when it debuted the Bolt, uh, for being the first of its kind, it's pretty amazing. It really is. And, you know, as you say, it's been less than 20 years since the first modern car with a high voltage battery pack hit the market at all. Uh, we didn't see the Prius in North America until the year 2000, but it's relatively young. It's, it's important to know the automotive history geeks among us, that, that'd be me, I guess. Um, <laughs> really, you know, you look back to the beginning of the last century. In 1900, cars, cars were evenly split, about a third, a third, and a third. A third of them ran on electricity, old lead-ass batteries, and they were considered the most refined, the smoothest, the nicest, but they had limited range, back then about 30 miles uh, of range. Yeah. They were really considered the only ones that were suitable for women to drive in those days. Yeah. Um, then you had steam cars, which had great performance, very smooth, could go long distances, but it took about 45 minutes to fire them up from cold because you had to stoke the boiler, get the pressure up in the steam and so forth. And then you had gasoline cars, which were considered the least refined because they were incredibly noisy and they were smelly and they frightened the horses and all of that. And they really didn't get practical until 1912 when a guy named Charles Kettering invented an electric self-starter. Because before that, you had to crank start them, and yeah. gasoline cars occasionally broke your arm. Um, but the electric <laughs> self starter, that, that lead acid battery com matched to a little tiny electric motor, yeah. made gasoline cars practical. And a century later, here we are looking again at electric cars because now we have lithium ion batteries. So, the same ones that are in your laptop, and that's changed everything. Yeah, so is, is this where, in that uh, gap, time gap, uh, is that's where the conspiracy theory about the old companies come in or what? I mean, that was a long time for really uh, come back to a technology, as you say, that in other fields of industry has like uh, taken a good, good, uh, strong pace uh, in, in the past 60, 70, 80 years, right? Um, yeah, I, I tend not to believe in conspiracy theories because generally they require all of the participants to act perfectly at all times and oil companies just like everyone else um, make mistakes all the time as we see in the news when oil spills or a tanker exactly yeah. what have you <laughs> um, it's really a matter of physics the first consumer lithium-ion battery cell didn't come on the market until 1989 in a sony video camera that was a huge advance i mean the theoretical physics had been known for 
for a while, but lithium batteries simply carry more energy. For the same weight, they carry about four times the energy of your old style lead acid like your starter battery. That was really what made the difference and what started to set in motion the modern battery electric cars that we have today. You mentioned the Volt, which came out as a 2011 model. The very same month, the Nissan Leaf came out as well. It's a battery electric car with maybe 80 miles of range. The Volt has an engine as a range extender. It has about 40 miles of range and then the engine switches on. Two different approaches, but they both rely on lithium ion batteries, which weren't possible until then. Yeah, which brings us now to the latest uh, installments of these kind of cars. The, la the latest, at least for me, I don't know if you had a chance to, tr to try it already, the BMW i8, which, uh, I mean, for a lot of people, it's like the, the, the next step uh, into all these changes and that really what is going to, what, 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 uh, more cars are going to look like in five, ten years. Uh, what, what, what's your opinion on this car? It's probably the most striking car I've driven in a couple of years. Talk about something to gather traffic and to have people taking selfies with your car while you're testing it. Um, but it is a first cut and a less expensive version of something that Porsche has done as well with their 918 Spider. Yeah, with, which but, but, is to, yeah it yeah, costs like five times more, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, the, I mean, the 918 Spider is basically a million-dollar car. The BMW i8 comes in somewhat above $100,000. It is, you know, if you look at them, a lot of people who buy striking, expensive sports cars don't really spend a lot of time driving them fast. They don't spend a lot of time driving them, period. I know. But the i8 is, in some ways, the antithesis of the BMW i3, which is their all-electric car. It's a small four-door car. They really call it a city car. It has a range of about 80 miles as well. Um, but it's unusual looking to be charitable. The i8 is stunning. I haven't found anyone who doesn't like the looks. And when you tell people, yeah, it's a BMW, it's this brand new sports car, it's got a carbon fiber reinforced body. Oh, and by the way, it plugs in, their jaw just drops. Exactly. It's a way to get people into electric cars where they're, they're going to look at some of the other options and say, yeah. Yeah, it's like the ultimate concept car, like brought to production, really almost in the same uh, way it was introduced almost five years ago as a, as a prototype. And a BMW uh, uh, is, is calling it one of the most important, if not the most important car in their 98-year history. I mean, that's a lot to say, no? Yes, it, it, that's exactly right. And BMW really, you know, the Germans were slow to the electric car game. The Japanese have a lot of experience with hybrids, as does Ford. Nissan really took a huge bet in trying to get ahead in electrics and be to electric cars what Toyota is to hybrids. But BMW, of the three German makers, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Audi slash Volkswagen Group, BMW is by far the most uh, advanced. They are using new materials like carbon fiber reinforced plastic for the body. They've really gotten religion, and these two, the i3 and the i8 that we're talking about now, are probably just the first two of an increasing range of cars that plug in for some or all of their range. And BMW has really invested in the future in a way that the other two don't seem to have. We're talking to John Bocker, the editor of Green Car Reports. And uh, John, uh, these cars, uh, obviously, like any other technology, I mean, they're a little bit pricier than the other. And when do you expect uh, the prices to start like coming down or leveling up with the other uh, powertrains uh, like gas, di gasoline, diesel, etc.? It's a good question, and it's it's really the one that will determine when electric cars start taking off in the mass market. Here's the data. Battery costs fall about 7% a year. It's not like, you know, microchips where they double in performance every 18 months. That's not how battery chemistry works. Yeah. But 7% a year doesn't help this year, doesn't help next year. But within five years, you know, we've already had four years on the market. Within another three to five years, you'll be half the cost of what we were in 2011. Meanwhile, it's important for people to understand that cars with engines, gasoline or diesel, between 2012 and 2025, 
to meet the new gas mileage regulations that are in force now, those cars are going to cost $3,000 more in real dollars. And that's what the EPA says. The car makers call gloom and doom and say, oh, no, it's going to be much more than that. So what you got is battery costs coming down every year and the cost of regular cars going up every year to meet the gas mileage rules. At some point, I figure 2020 to 2023 maybe, all of a sudden people are going to be looking at cars in the showroom where the battery car is cheaper, the gasoline car is more expensive, and they still may not be straight across. Yeah. But when the price differential comes down, someone's going to say, oh, wait, so the battery car only costs me a quarter as much per mile? Really? Incredible. So, and then they start to do math in their minds, and that's when you get the big takeoff. Won't be this year, but it's coming. Okay, thank you very much, John Bucker, the editor of GreenCarReports.com. That's where our audience can look for uh, more of your all your articles and stuff and everything, right, Ren? Thanks for having me on here. Thank you. Have a great day. Y ya regresamos para hablar de otra tecnología que ahora se considera verde, los motores diesel, que ahora en el reporte anual de la AAA han acaparado la mitad de, de los vehículos verdes del 2014. Esto es Alto 0.60, yo soy Javier. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. 